Hello to all my friends out there. Well, I can't find my lighter, so we're going to have to go primitive with matches. This video is the two most important things to store for preserving food, no pressure cooking, foods that most likely will run out and be rationed and buying forever stuff. Oh, this, this one only has one wick. This is really a nice... Uh, candle one wick candle I like three uh, this is nice I bought it at the thrift store for four dollars it's called sea spa this smells good okay so now what okay today I was coming home and I saw somebody had painted some of these friendship rocks huge ones about this big with like a sun and I don't know what the other one is so you're supposed to take them and then you put them somewhere and you know all kinds of friends are happening except in this case these were like huge rocks so you could take it I don't know if it was owned by 7-eleven so I thought okay I want to get a big rock and I am going to do like an Egyptian theme. Here it is. So this was my lofty plan, right? So I came up with all kinds of Egyptians. I put three and I came up with a, an ibis bird, I think. I came up with a camel. I came up with some cats. I try to do some hieroglyphics. That was my lofty plan, and I thought, well, why don't you try a small rock first, you know, before you get crazy? So I did, and, and as usual, you know, like these people, oh, no problem, no problem. Yeah, well, if you're new into friendship rocks, so here is my friendship rock. This is a, a mermaid. So I didn't want to buy a bunch of, of stuff, so I used a magic marker. And I put on the back, the world is a beautiful place. And it got all screwed up. And I go, well, if you don't like my friendship rock, then just leave it there. So that's what I'm doing in crafts now. So, okay, I went to the thrift store today. And I bought, what did I buy? I bought... I'm trying to find these metal, I bought this little metal bowl. Everything was super cheap. I think this, I got this for $2. So what I'm trying to do is buy stuff that lasts forever. You know, like your grandmother who had pans for life. So here are the uh, bowls I bought recently and they, they don't take up too much space. And I find them to be really easy to wash you know, I'm doing the cooking, and the little one fits right in there. And it doesn't matter if I have duplicates, because when the time comes, I will sell them. And then I got this nice uh, pot. I got this for $4. The lid, this was uh, $4, and I used my coupon, I got a dollar off, and the lid was, you know, so I got that for $4. And then I have this lid, you know, the universal lid, so that's good. So um, right now, before things get critical, I'm saying, okay, I want to make sure that if some kind of recession or depression happens, I'm trying to buy stainless steel stuff. So today I got this uh Pot, and I'm going to try water bath canning, not pressure cooking yet. And so I had already bought this thing to uh, lift the lids out, and I bought two of these. I don't, I still need some lids, so I bought this really cheap. I've been working, looking for one of these, just like when I was looking for knives. So if you shop in the thrift store, your canning is not going to cost you much. Okay, then the canning is not a big deal, just as long as you have everything you need. Okay, so um, I wanted to mention this. This is a very cheap 
cranberry glass bowl, a candy dish. And I have a bowl, but I can't find it. I might have sold it. But uh, what I want to mention is one of the followers said she saw a lady buying oatmeal, peanut butter, and candy. So uh, I bought these candies for $1.25 at um, Dollar Tree because I make, uh, some years I make gingerbread houses. And a couple of years when Christmas came, and so of course I already ate one bag. I even spilled some in my purse and I was so happy because I found a couple of gumdrops. So, you know, I wanted to mention the cranberry glass. Okay, cranberry glass dates back to the 1600s. This is, uh, this stuff is called uh, circus glass. So the, the cranberry glass was really popularized during the Victorian era. Queen Victoria started everything, tea parties, educating the people. Actually, all the Queen Mothers have been awesome. The one we have now is two. Okay, so 19th century. And so then what happened is they started giving it away. You know, they manufactured it cheap. This, this isn't from the 1950s. This is just cheap type carnival glass, but I try to find it. And it was called Poor Man's uh, Tiffany. And it was given away at carnivals and uh, fairgrounds in the 1950s. I saw a lady buying dolls and I try to find them too. This is a Ken doll. I sell these three dollars each or two for five. And last time I went to the swap meet, I sold a lot of dolls. And so the neighbor said, are you going to the swap meet? And I go, no, because I don't want to sell my stuff. I mean, my stuff is driving me insane, but I don't want to uh, sell it. I'm looking for little medicine bottles and cute little bottles, and I can't find those. I cannot even. Okay, and... I bought a sweater, I think it was last week, and I thought, why wear sweatshirts? I bought this nice H&M sweater for uh, $4. I wanted to mention something to you. Okay, as soon as I walk in the door, I go upstairs, like I take that little tag off, I turn it inside out, and then I, you know, these... Um, these dry cleaning bags, I throw one in the dryer. But what I start doing, so I cut the actual sheet in five pieces, but what I start doing is, you know, it's in five pieces, then I cut, because these clean big items, but what I start doing is I started cutting uh, one third of the sheet. So I have another little piece here. So that way I'm getting like, instead of five things, I'm getting six or seven, because these are a little bit expensive. $8 for five. I mean, it's not expensive compared to, uh, and then I seal these good. I, I usually tape this too on the edges. And uh, then, you know, my, my um, clothes are clean. They're never dirty in my house, so I don't get any germs. Uh, the COVID is making a comeback. You would think that the people who have some uh, prosperity wouldn't get it. I bought this Starbucks cup. Disease is no respecter of persons. This is my leftover mint tea. If you make it good, it's good. All right, now, okay, last night I made lettuce wraps and I had one left over. So I heated the hamburger and had another lettuce wrap and I had leftover macaroni and cheese. But later on tonight, I, I want to eat a little meal. So I made myself, now this is the good tuna because it's got my homemade pickles in. Here it is. I, I sprinkled some paprika on the top. So I could make a tuna fish sandwich, here it is, 
see my homemade pickles? Yummy. Or I'm going to on my homemade pickles. I don't even have lids for my jars yet, but I do have some jars. I want to give you the pickle recipe in case you didn't get it. This is easy and, and this is going to come in handy when things start going in down south because then you're going to have some acidic food. You can still get out here uh, vinegar for $3 a gallon. So here's the recipe. Wash the cucumbers good with water. Put the, cu put the cucumbers in a bowl of water and sprinkle with salt. Let's set a few minutes. Wash good in water. So your, pick, your, your cucumbers are really clean. Peel most of the skin off to remove wax and insecticide. You don't have to if they're homegrown. Five. Put thinly sliced cucumbers and onion, I use yellow, but you could use red, in a bowl and sprinkle with salt and garlic powder to taste. Six, heat two cups vinegar, two cups water, one tablespoon pickling spice, and one half cup uh, sugar. So you boil this. Then you put the cucumbers in a jar, cover with the vinegar, store in the refrigerator. And then, you know, you can make yourself some really good potato salad or it was really delicious on my lettuce wrap. It was really delicious in my tuna and I have sausages and hot dogs. That, so that would be really good. So just that one little thing, but no, 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 there's more, of course. Okay, so now, so the two things that are very major to the most, um, what do you want to call it? Um, elementary food preserving is sugar and vinegar. And the vinegar will protect you from uh, bacteria, maybe even virus, who knows? Okay, so in my tuna, I had tuna, mayonnaise, mussels, pickles, and pickle juice, chives, dry onion, and I put celery in there, salt and pepper and dry garlic powder. I wanted to mention one of the followers said she saw a lady buying up in Dollar Tree oatmeal, peanut butter, and candy. So I thought that was good. Now the other thing is cheese, Diet Coke, and toilet paper. Diet Coke, we're gonna see, we've been warned. And so what I found today was a good sale, I found this deli cheese. This one was 44 cents. This is really good cheese. I bought one. I didn't buy it all because I really don't need cheese. Uh, 42 cents, two. I just put these straight into the freezer. Wait, this is a big one, $1.43. So uh, uh, 50 cents. Uh, these are a uh, smoked Gouda. Yummy, yummy. I bought uh, this one for uh, 50 cents. This is why don't be sneering at Markdown Shopping. Then I bought two of these. Are these Italian? I think these are Italian cheese. One was uh, 75 cents and one was 52 cents. So this is a lot of cheese for one person. And so with my uh, tuna tonight, I have cheese that I bought, probably marked down. So I want to eat this up before I, uh, I'll just put the that cheese in the freezer. So I have two of these. I don't know why I opened another one. I think I paid $2 for this. This is good. So I have another one of those, I think. No, this is something else. So I could have a few different kinds. Oh, this is one of my favorite cheeses. So, you know, if you're willing, and this one is Swiss cheese. If you're willing to shop around, you can eat good cheese. And then I bought uh, crackers. 
for 99 cents and I can put my, um, I actually love uh, cheese and crackers. I used to work with this guy and uh, he was the most gracious guy. And I used to get these clients, and don't ask me why, because in the mornings is not my best, but my clients would come, would come in very early. I knew these barbers that started at 6 a.m., but this was like eight or nine. And he would come up with cheese and crackers. And I, I really kind of irritated me, you know, I'm thinking, my God, he's on the way to work and, you know, I'm in a very bad mood. And uh, I always think about him. He was young, too. He did the damnedest things to me, and I really used to like him. So I used to, one time, he goes, Ruthie, will you go with me to return my necklace? And I go... Okay, so we go driving over, and and the girl is kind of nasty to him, uh, you know, about returning uh, the bracelet or necklace. It was a gold necklace, and I said, "Guys, she's so darn rude." And he goes, "Well, I actually broke it with some wire cutters because I wanted to get the money back." I go, "How come you made me go with you?" makes me look dishonest and he started laughing and then so i'm already annoyed as heck i mean he was just like an irritating guy but he was lovable so he got away from and he takes out a giant marijuana bud and starts smoking it in the car i go i am going to kill you if i make it back to the shop alive <laughs> those were the good old days First of all, these days, I wouldn't leave the shop to go with someone to return their necklace. I can't believe I did that. I'm a divorced mom. Yeah, that's my life. So I have cheese. I have crackers. I have tuna. But guess what else I have? Something really good that I pickle. Yes. Life is good. It's a beautiful world we live in, you guys. Remember that. Um, I trained myself many years ago to enjoy life. You know, a lot of the time I would be in such miserable circumstances. It really, it really was kind of mind boggling, but I trained myself to enjoy life no matter how bad things were. And finally it became so habitual with me. Um, I, I said to myself, can't they just effing enjoy life? Well, no, they couldn't. It's not a habit. Okay, so here is my next pickling adventure. This is roasted jalapeno peppers and celery. So what I wanted to do, no more of this buying those little diced chilies. Forget it, just make your own. So I, I, di I cut all the seeds out and I really wanted to um, get the seeds, so I bought, oh, and I still have a lot left, look. I bought them marked down. I wanted to dry these seeds, and I want to, I want to grow indoors um, peppers, tomatoes, squash, and onions. So, okay, let me get out, I'll get a couple celery, these celery should be good. Ooh, yummy. They were good right out of the, uh, the, uh, ooh, yummy. That's a celery. And then, you know, I took the leaves off. I'll finish dehydrating them in the window seal. So we're going to be in a lot less danger of running out of food. Okay, so now for the brine, which we're going to be, um, we're going to be, uh, preserving all kinds of stuff. Pip, those are cucumbers, these are jalapenos and celery. There's carrots, there's um, uh, there's um, cauliflower, there's all kinds of stuff. Mushrooms. Okay, this one is one cup vinegar and one cup water, any kind of vinegar, but one teaspoon salt, and I have this good salt. Uh, I think I was making cheese. 
if you have whole milk, boil your whole milk to um, not quite boiling, just about, and then add for like half a liter. Here's my um, here's my vinegar. Uh, Walmart, but I like to buy Smart and Final too. But um, then put like uh, for like um, for like half a half a quart, put about two tablespoons of vinegar or lemon juice. Cover your milk and let it curdle, and then just put it in a fine screen. That's always dangerous. <laughs> you know, pour it. Don't, don't get rid of your whey. And then just shape it into a ball. You know, with your spoon. Like this. And, you know, mash it down until you pretty much mash all the water out. Then get some ice cold water and plunge your cheese into it for a minute. And, and squeeze it out and then put a little uh, salt on it and you know let it harden up in the refrigerator and you know you're gonna have some uh, you're gonna have some um, some cheese as long as you have milk one time I got into this argument it wasn't an argument it was this lady she was Danish and it was what is more important milk or cheese and I said milk because of gravy you know you can make macaroni and cheese though, but you need milk. But anyway, I've been thinking about it and I think I hate to say it, but you know, this is really going to save your life. If you start running low on, on, um, a meat. So, uh, for this, uh, these pickled jalapenos, oh, I'm about to sneeze one teaspoon salt, so I'll show you the salt, half cup sugar. The sugar is very important, and I had a little brine left, so I saved that, and I'll put some pickles in there, or something. Uh, and then one half teaspoon garlic powder, but you could use a couple garlic cloves. And you keep these in the refrigerator. You could do, um, you could use a boiling bath but I'm not doing that because I'm not making that much. But I might start doing that with some tomatoes. So now these are my celery bottoms. And you can see within like one or two days, it's starting to sprout celery. So you're going to have some greens. So uh, this is all, it seems not important, but it's very important. Okay, so we have cheese, Diet Coke, and toilet paper. Now... Um, okay, the Great Depression started in 1929 when the stock market crashed and lasted until 1939. However, they started rationing in 1941. And how long did they ration? Until 1947. So we're going from 1929, 1939, 1949, 1947, 20 years. So like these people who think, oh, everything is just fine. Don't worry. No, don't worry. But like every time you go to the store, buy some vinegar in a gallon, maybe one a week for six, eight, ten weeks. Same with water. Uh, store up some sugar, 25 bad. When you can't get any more, any, it goes fast. And you don't waste your brine. You can put more veggies in there as it goes down. But if you use it in stuff, it tastes really good. Like I'm pretty sure this is gonna taste very delicious on my uh, on my cheese and crackers. Or if I was to make salsa, I could use some of my jalapenos for sure. Mm, that tastes so good. All right. So what if they ration sugar? coffee and cola is going way up and they've been warning us why not just pick up a couple extra cans now fats okay pick up a couple cans of of crisco uh, olive oil is very important because you need some olive oil for some kinds of uh preserving 
pan fish. Okay, now I want to talk to you about fish if I can find the can. People are relatively prosperous at this time. If you can buy the good yellowfin tuna, if it gets to the point where we have to eat it, it's not it's not cheap. It's two dollars a can, but it's cheap relative to other uh, protein. Cheese and canned milk. That's why I'm just stocking up this cheese when I get it on sale. Butter. You need but butter for good gravy making and macaroni and cheese making. Canned goods. You know how bad that's going to be if we go to the store and we can't get cans of fruits and vegetables? Vegetables are not as bad as fruit because, like, look at all these little herbs I grew in my window seal. But I can't have, like, a peach tree or a pear tree. I made pear butter. So tomorrow I'll probably make some pear bread. So this habit of making bread one, some bread once a week and some uh, fruit bread once a week is really going to save you well. And making jam, shoes. Ooh, that could be bad, you know. I, buy, I bought two pair of shoes last week for $9 each and gasoline. I could see that, especially uh, now if you live in Europe. Uh, I I'm wondering about this these people who who are. I'm thinking to myself, if you live in China, do you think the government is going to take care of you? Didn't they have the Great Famine? What about discount shopping? My son and I were talking and we were talking about, you know, no matter how well you you um, prepare, you're not going to be able to figure out what's going to happen. But if you do everything you possibly can, that is going to help somewhat. At least it only leaves the stuff you didn't think of. I love these these little cakes. So, um, you know, this is going to taste very, very yummy. When I eat this, I'm probably just going to, uh, these are so delicious. You know, and you might go, well, I don't want to buy some old food. This is fine. I'm going to eat it. It's not going to last long enough to go stale. And no wasting. I eat everything. See this? I'm going to eat it. No wasting. Freezing all the leftovers. Be looking for good deals. Aggressively. Trying to buy some food. So now I have plenty of pepper seeds. I need squash seeds. I was looking at squash today. I will be buying plenty of produce when it's marked down and I will save the seeds. So let's say things stay good and I never have to, I never have to worry about rationing. I never have to worry about uh, food shortages. I'll be fine because you know, I'll be enjoying life. Nineteen twenty nine to nineteen forty seven. We had World War One and then we had World War Two. And um, Great Britain suffered a lot. They were literally bo bombed. Now this is the bad thing. Poland is the gateway to um, Europe. Another thing, I heard a prophecy that um, Russia has secret allies, like people that are, are secretly supported towards them. I don't know how secretive it is, but just knowing that, that there's a possibility that some of uh, our allies are really not our allies. 
I mean, I could see that you need the natural gas or your population is going to starve. So the possibilities are, are pretty bad, but there's nothing we can do about that. But we can say to ourselves, well, I'm certainly not going to let myself starve. I'm going to do every possible thing I possibly can now. So I have mint, so I can make some mint tea. I have oregano, and I have basil, and I have parsley. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.